Hey gang, welcome to Ask Mark, our scuba diving Q&A, where I mark a former scuba diving instructor, do my very best to answer your scuba diving questions. So if you do have any scuba diving questions, pop them down in the comments section underneath this video. And if you use this Ask Mark hashtag in your comment, it doesn't really matter where at the beginning or the end, uh, you get yourself and your question featured in an upcoming video. Uh, but I do type out an answer in the comments section, so you do actually get an answer as soon as possible. You don't have to wait for the video to come out. Today, I'm answering a question from from Gentle Rain, lovely name, uh, about heating undersuits. So Gentle Rain says, hey Mark, would you please do a deeper discussion on artificial heating, cold water and decompression, specifically if there is any additional time not accounted by the computer? Yes, uh, we now have plenty of battery powered undersuits for both dry suits and wet suits as well, believe it or not. Um, the very best dry suit and undersuit combo out there will not protect you from extremely cold waters or extended dives eventually you are going to get cold from exposure so a heated undersuit can help to provide some valuable additional body heat from a battery but they do have some considerations as you say so the first thing that i would recommend is if you uh, if you look up um dr neil pollock um, he does a, a wonderful talk on thermal physiology um, and it's looking at yeah, scuba divers when they're diving cold versus when they're warm and in different like combinations. Uh, so in the talk they were looking at uh, divers who, who start in cold water, they, they go for the dive in cold water, and then as they ascend, they, they switch the water to warm, so they warm the water up, and vice versa. So they did like cold, 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 warm, 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 and then warm, cold, I think. Uh, and then they, they adjusted the dive times as well, and they were trying to work out if how this would affect their decompression. Uh, so, in the cold, warm scenario, where they start the dive and they're underwater at the deepest point and it's cold, but then they warm up towards the end of the dive as they're decompressing, 0.1% of subjects had decompression sickness. Whereas, when you flip it over, warm, cold, 22% had decompression sickness. Um, now, th th there's far more that that's really uh, sort of brief uh, like summary of that one particular experiment, but I do recommend that you uh, that you watch that um, uh, that lecture. It's very interesting. I've seen it live, and um, yeah, this is a thing that we don't really always account for. There's there's like there's at least one dive computer that I know of. A lot of um, I say a lot of. I think it's a, a few of Scuba Pro's dive computers do have human factor diving which is you can have a, a separate chest band belt that you attach onto your, uh, your body before you put your undersuit and whatnot. And that has a heart rate monitor, but it also has a skin temperature sensor. So unlike a dive computer that you strap to your wrist on the outside of your wetsuit or dry suit, dive computer doesn't know how warm or cold you are. It knows how warm or cold the water is, has no idea on your like body temperature. So at least with those Scuba Pro ones with the human factor diving, it can tailor your decompression. If it knows that your heart rate's kind of chilled out, your skin temperature is nice and warm, it can make it a bit more um, liberal, I suppose is the, uh, the best way. You, you can stay underwater for longer. It gives you longer, oh, pardon me. It gives you longer NDLs. Um, whereas if it can tell that your heart rate is quite active and your skin temperature or your skin temperature is quite cold, your body's working harder to, to keep you warm, then it makes it a bit more conservative. It suggests that you exit the water sooner or you have longer decompression stops because yeah, it is all on like how warm or cold your body is. And that's the complicated part with wetsuits because as you dive down, the deeper down you go, the more they compress. So then your insulation is reduced. You're also in deeper waters. So the water temperature is dropping. The deeper down you're going, you're getting less insulation. So that means that you're kind of slowing things down, but then you 
as you ascend, you come back up into warmer waters. The wetsuit produces a bit more insulation. It stops uh, like heat from radiating out quite as much. So it's adjusting your rates of on gassing and off gassing. So yeah, you, you basically do need to be aware. And with external heated undersuits, yeah, you, you need to think about when you're switching it on, when you're switching it off, you wanna make sure that you can switch it off remotely. There are some where it's all like internal and if something goes wrong, there, there have been cases where they just, they, they suddenly overheat and like lithium ion batteries and salt water, um, they, they don't mix too well or they mix a bit more excitably. So you don't want that like against your body. So I'd rather have the battery outside of the suit where I can just disconnect uh, or at least switch it off. Um, whereas if it's like physically inside of your dry suit, you have to like unzip underwater, which is not a good thing. Um, so all these kind of things like racing through my head. Um, yeah, yeah, if you have an external battery, then you have to think about how you're getting the power into the suit. It's like a Santee suit. They have thermo valve, uh, which is a, a new chest valve. You swap your old one or they do have a I think they just call it a connector where you take your old valve you fit this and then you fit your existing valve on into that that allows you to connect a hose and then a battery an external battery and then there's wire on the inside that you connect to your internal dry suit undersuit yeah there's, there's a lot that goes into it and yeah you do really have to think about when's best to, to switch it on, when's best to be warm, because you want to be quite cold to start with when you're actually on gassing and you're absorbing all of those gases, the colder you are, then the slower that is. But then when you're decompressing, you want to be able to get rid of it at a safe rate. That's the tricky part, because another thing is post dive. After the dive, especially a cold dive, what a lot of divers do, um, depending on where they are and what facilities they have, uh, they either like go and like hug a radiator, um, have a hot shower, uh, get a hot drink. And what they were finding is that in their hands, especially they had uh, bubble formation. Um, so like minor decompression um, uh, uh, sickness, bubbles forming in these tissues because you're accelerating the rate of that decompression of those dissolved tissues, uh, or sorry, dissolved gases in your tissues. So yeah, but definitely look up um, uh, like thermal stress is, uh, or thermal stress and scuba diving is quite a good thing to uh, to search for. There are quite a few uh, lectures online, but yeah, Dr. Neil Pollock uh, does a particularly good one. Uh, yeah, it is a great question and um, yeah, it's definitely something worth considering as opposed to just throwing it all on and just getting the biggest battery and just switching it on for the entire dive. You do kind of need to pay attention to, um, to yeah, you, your decompression rates, depending on whether you're having this external heating or not. When you actually get down to it, you do have quite a few choices nowadays with um, uh, with heated undersuits. I quite like the uh, the Santee ones just because they have um, heating coils over more of the suit. Some of them it's only on like one side. Um, whereas with the Santee, it's, it's kind of all over coverage and in the real key areas. Also with the gloves, you have individual heating elements that go down each finger. So you still get that dexterity. Um, yeah, you do have plenty of choices nowadays. I have actually seen someone that does heated socks as well. Um, so that's new. That's something that I don't think Santee has made yet. Um, but yeah, as you say, you do need to pay attention to uh, to, to thermal stress and uh, and how it affects your decompression. Yeah, a complicated subject um, that's better left to uh, to full on professionals. Uh, so Divers Alert Network will be a a good like resource to search for. Otherwise, yeah, Dr. Neil Pollock. Um, does a, a lot of this kind of lectures and a lot of them you can just watch on YouTube. Uh, if I can find any, I'll pot some links down in the description below. Um, otherwise, yeah, if you have any interesting questions, pop them down in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, and if you use the Ask Mark hashtag, it gets featured in an up and coming video. Thank you very much for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.